All right, guys, so now that we got the basic functions taken care of to handle and unpack just a simple Ethernet frame, what we can do now is we can start working on our main function. So this is essentially our main program, and all it's going to do is it's essentially just going to be a big loop. And this loop is just going to run forever as long as our program's running, and it's just going to sit and listen for packets to come in. So it's just going to keep looping, looping forever, waiting for packets to come in. And whenever they do, we're pretty much going to extract all the information from it and display it to the user or do whatever we want with it. So that is what we're doing essentially. And before we can actually start that loop, we're just going to make a simple socket. So we need a socket, of course, so we can have connections with other computers. So I'm just going to call it connection equals socket dot socket. And if you guys don't um, know about sockets or anything like that, then I recommend you check out my Python reverse shell tutorials. Or there's another Python series I made recently um, talking about sockets. But there's kind of a lot to cover, but I talk about it all in that. So, all right. So the first one is just AF just the packet and socket where are you at just the raw data and socket dot n t o h s three all right so if you guys know about sockets then and if you watch my other tutorial series you're going to know what those first two arguments are this last one i actually didn't talk about this last one, make sure that it's compatible with all, all machines. Again, making sure that big Indian, little Indian, converting it properly, pretty much making sure the byte order is correct so we can read it. So after this, once we have just a raw socket, we can go ahead and start our main loop. Now remember our main loop, and actually let me go ahead and call main now so I don't forget it. All right. So again, what our main loop is going to do is it's just, it's just going to keep looping and looping, an infinite loop, looping forever, and it's just going to listen for any data that comes across. Now, once it comes across, we're going to take raw data, going to make that variable, and also the address, and we're just going to write receive from, and the biggest buffer size that you can have is 65535. So basically, that's what we're doing. We're taking our socket, whenever it gets something, whenever it sees information, we're just gonna go ahead and receive it all, and then we're gonna store it in the variable data and address. And why is this indentation? Go ahead and format that. All right, are you freaking happy now? All right, so that's what we're gonna do. And remember, this is just the address of wherever it's sending to or the source, and this is the actual data that we're going to be passing into ethernet frame so remember this function right here is going to unpack it all and pretty much give us the cool information of whatever we want so remember the ethernet frame it returns four different chunks it returns the destination the source the ethernet type or ethernet protocol and the actual payload or the cool stuff inside so what we can do from here is just write something like dest mac and source mac and then what am I going to call this? Let's just call this uh, eth proto and the actual data. So now we can go ahead. Well, I'm not that lazy. All right. So ethernet frame raw data. All right, so again, what we're doing is taking that data that comes across the network, and that's just the pulses of ones and zeros, passing it to our function, and we're gonna extract all of that stuff and store it in nice, awesome variables that we can use. So now let's just go ahead and make sure that this works up to this point by printing something out. So let me just print out like a ethernet frame. Oops, knocked over my mouse. I actually have a um, vertical mouse. If you guys look on like Google Images, type in vertical mouse. It's like this weird tall mouse, but I need to use it because I started having like carpal tunnel symptoms. 
So I'm sure no one cares about that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep uh, going on with my tutorial now. All right. So for this, what we can do is we can just print out the destination, the source, and the protocol because we're gonna be dealing with the data later because there's a bunch of stuff we need to do to it. So I'll just write destination and then I'll write source. Now I'll write protocol. Who is sexting me in the middle of my video? All right. So I'm just going to format this in the way they want to format. All right. So if you guys have never seen these curly braces before, basically they're just placeholders and you can format it in kind of weird ways. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to have placeholders right here. And what's going to go in these placeholders? Well, just whatever you wrote right here. And remember, in this point, the MAC addresses are properly formatted already thanks to this function right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let me go ahead and open a browser and refresh some page and check it out. All right. So right now, what we did is we extracted the destination the source and the protocol. So this protocol right here, this eight, that's the one that we're really concerned about because that's just normal, um, what you would think of as just like normal internet traffic. So that's where we're gonna be focus on, focusing on, but right now it looks like everything is working fine. But now that the boring ethernet data is taken care of, what we can do is we can start breaking up the main payload and start trying to figure out what websites they're going to, what information they typed in, you know, whose Facebook pro profile they're looking at, all that fun stuff. So that's what we have to look forward to. I will see you guys in the next video.